Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final session of our Palmer Waltz. We've walked, we've locked, we've waltzed. Now we have to learn how to restart the dance and there might be a little bit of time to put a bit of shaping and styling into. Let's get into it. There isn't much left to add to our Palmer Waltz, so let's have a quick recap of what we've done so far. Six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. And now we would progress into our waltz. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, and so on. So in the last session, we ended with the natural waltzes. We're going to develop those just a little bit to make them slightly easier. We're going to make sure that we're doing the correct number, and then we're going to give you the final figure which turns you from that closed position where we're doing the waltz back into shadow, ready to start the sequence again. So let's get started. So in the previous video, we looked at the basics of the natural waltz. We went over the steps, the forward half and the backward half. Let's just tweak those a little bit to make them a little bit easier when you're dancing with your partner. Whoever's commencing forward needs to commence straight through their partner. We don't want to try and go around them in any fancy way. We are going to be dancing through each other. It's the fastest way to get around each other. So you progress forward on the right, turning to the right, turning clockwise. As you get towards the end of that step, I want us to think, don't take a side step, really bring this hip around, really take it around, and there you're almost in position. All we have to do from here is close our feet. So let's have a closer focus on those feet. We have right, swinging that hip around, close the feet. Whenever you're moving forward in a natural waltz, you are the person who is in control. This is one of the very few steps where there really isn't a leader and a follower. Whoever's going forward has right of way. So we need to make sure that when we're going backwards, we let the person coming forwards do their job properly. So whether we are usually the lead or the follower, if it's our job to go backwards, we have to make sure we progress on the left, we don't impede the person coming forward on their right, and we make sure that we allow their hip to come through and we take a shorter step to ensure that we don't get out of alignment with them and close our feet as appropriate. So let's focus on that footwork of the backward half. We're going to progress back on the left, a slightly smaller step as we come around on the right and close our feet. So let's put those tweaks into practice and put it all together. We're going to progress forward on the right, swinging that hip around before we close our feet, back on the left, smaller step, and close our feet. So apart from those tips and tricks for getting the two halves working for you, make sure you keep a little bit of compression in your knees and you want to try and keep a nice fluid smooth action for your circular waltz. So you've put it all together, you've given it a go and it's still feeling a bit rough. Here are three additional tips and tricks to help you out. So tip number one is the head, and this is a really easy one to identify. When we take our hold and we're performing our natural circular waltz, I want to be looking out this way through the window. Ladies, you want to be looking out that way through the window. We don't want to, as we go around, both be looking where we're going, because that does make the circles a little bit bigger than they need to be. Tip 
Tip number two is your hip contact, your hip real estate. And if you haven't looked at our uh, holds for advanced modern dancers, you can find it on the gold tier level. That will give you all you need to know. But for this one, I want you to think of, gents, keeping your right hip secure with the lady's right hip and in contact. And this way, when we move through each other, we know where each other is. It's very difficult to waltz if you can drive a truck between yourselves. Last tip is, of course, the frame. It all comes down to the frame. Gents, you are carrying your lady. She is your picture. You are carrying her in your frame, which means if you have jelly arms, she just won't go with you. So we want to make sure that we get into a nice secure frame at the end of our separation. We're up and lifting in, and our frame is nice and secure, and it doesn't bend. So we've done the separation and we've got into a good position. We're putting all our tips, tweaks and tricks into place. Let's have a look at how it works. Into position, heads are nice, frame is nice, hips are in contact. Here we go. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. So how many of those waltzes do we do in a row? And the answer is seven. If you count one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, et cetera, you get to seven, two, three, and we change it up on the eight. That means that both of us are going to complete three and a half full rotations before we do anything different. So what happens on the eight, two, three? Well, those are the steps where we have to turn around, get back into that upper shadow or the Suviana position and be stable enough, ready to start the whole sequence again. Let's take a look. If we've done our one, two, three, two, two, three, all the way up to seven, we're ready to count eight, two, three and perform what we call the turnout back into the Vesuviana position. It looks like this, eight, two, three. So let's have a look at the leader's footwork. Leaders, at the end of your seven, two, three, you are progressing down the line of dance. You're already looking forward and ready to go. So it's the lady who needs to do the extra turn. This makes our footwork slightly easier, but our arm works slightly harder, which we'll get to in a moment. But the footwork, you will be ready to progress forward on your right. You don't need to turn anymore. So we're going to step forward and slightly to the side, close our feet and replace weight on the right foot. Three simple counts, we have right, left, right. So let's have a closer look at the ladies' steps now. Ladies, you're progressing backwards and have to complete that extra half a turn. You're starting backwards on your left, turning over the first two steps, left, right, and a tap. So let's have a closer look at that footwork. It is one, two, and tap. So that's the footwork, what about the arms? So let's have a look at that turnout focusing on the arm work. It is one, two, three. So between us we have four arms and they all do something different. So let's have a look at them in turn. If we pay attention to the man's left hand, what this hand is going to do as we progress through the movement is push down slightly to allow the lady to turn in place. If we focus now on the man's right hand, it begins on the shoulder blade and as the lady turns, it's going to create and keep contact as much as possible to help keep the lady in the correct position. If we put those two halves together with the footwork, we have one, two, three. So if we concentrate on the lady's right hand now, that's being pushed down gently by the man's left, progresses down and will end up across her waist, nearly on her hip. If we focus now on the lady's left arm, possibly the most important through the entire move, it's going to assume the Hermione Granger position, suck it up to that ear to get out of the gentleman's way as she progresses around. If we put both of those together, we have one arm going down or one arm coming up over the figure. Putting it all together, we have eight, two, three.
So that is the final figure of the dance and it does complete the sequence. There is only one thing left to do and that is of course make sure that when we're restarting the sequence we're both stepping out on our left foot which should be accomplished with the lady's tap and the man's transition of weight and over the first step of the new sequence you will assume that the Suviana position. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get there at the end of that final figure. Allow it to develop into the next sequence as long as you have control for the first turn on beat two of the new sequence. So if we finish the previous sequence, we have eight, two, three, one. So that's it, the final figures, the tips and the tricks and the restart. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, three, two, three. Four two three four two three one two three two two three three two three four two three one two three two two three three two three four two three five two three six two three seven two three ten two three everybody on finishing the Palmer Waltz. It is a fantastic easygoing new Vogue sequence and you can upskill it into some of the others later on. I hope you have enjoyed it. Wherever you get to dance it on the floor or at home, enjoy that and we'll see you next time.